Last time we spoke to you, Ian, you were pushing for the use of five subs. So how pleased are you to see that uh, common sense has prevailed here? Oh, absolutely delighted. I mean, you haven't got to be a genius to work out. How many injuries is everybody getting? You know, you're asking lads to play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. And particularly my lot, we had a two-week lockdown that other people didn't have. Um, and we had to play three games in a week. And I can only change three of them. So, you know, it's only common sense. And and I still don't get it. In our, in our division, 14 clubs voted for it to do it and 10 didn't i don't understand what they're thinking so at least we've got the chance to pick the same team and change five of them for fitness reasons not tactics it's not trying to cheat and change things like that or slow the game down at the end and make four or five substitutes at the end so you bounce the clock down it's about people's health and keeping them fully fit i've never seen so many injuries in my life so at least there's been some common sense at last yeah, and that injury situation is much the same in the Premier League where they are still only using three substitutes. So, uh, can you explain why that is? No, they're not using their heads and they're not putting their players' welfare first. That should be absolutely paramount in the middle of a pandemic when you don't know who's got this illness. Honestly, it's absolutely ridiculous. We're being asked to carry on playing. You've got to put the welfare of your players first, not just the COVID side of it, but also the health side of it. Soft tissue injuries, the repetitiveness of, and the, the vigour of the, the intensity of the way they have to play. Just because there's no crowd there is still as, as intense, not quite as good and is not quite as interesting, in my opinion, without the crowd. Yeah. But your players are exerting all sorts of things and really you should be able to change more of them at this moment. Only for this season, only until COVID, we can conquer it. Everybody's telling us we've conquered it with this vaccine, but I don't believe that yet. I'm not sure that they're on, not just saying that. Hopefully, I, I'd love there to be a vaccine before Christmas. I can't see it happening myself. Now, let's uh, talk about that government's uh, winter survival package that was announced yesterday, a rescue package uh, with news of funding for 11 sports, and yet men's professional football not included in that, Ian. Now, y you know uh, that uh, the landscape, the financial landscape of the Premier League compared to League Two are worlds uh, apart. Perhaps this is the government's way of saying to the Premier League, you need to do something for the EFL. You're there in League Two with Grimsby. What did you make of it? Well, I've been saying it all along. Someone needs to govern them. You know, you know we, we were asked to vote on these five substitutes, you know, and in our division, we voted on it. Really, someone should tell us you're going to use five substitutes, you know, honestly. And, and at the top of the game, there is more than enough money knocking around to not have any crowds for the, for the big clubs and then the, the second elite clubs, which is the championship, they're allowed to lose 13 million a year without anybody looking at them. So they're not going to give you the money. They're going to want something for it, you know, and, and it's not right. So really, a government minister should just go straight in and say, actually, let's have a look at this. Show me where the money is. Look at all the money that's going out to agents and into games. They don't need to be that. They should absolutely make sure the football pyramid survives. So I would not trust anybody who's in it, who's gaining from that, to ask, would you give it away? You've got the money, would you give it away? It's not your money. Someone should take it off them and distribute it fairly and equally so the pyramid survives. It's quite simple, really. So you're saying it's purely government responsibility to make sure that clubs in leagues two like yours stay in survival if this is still going, say, in six, seven months' time? I am saying I don't trust the people that were supposed to do it. You know, Rick Parry with this, like, going and talking to two American-owned football clubs, Liverpool and Manchester United, that ain't right, is it? Even the Premier League themselves kicked that out. Project Big Picture or whatever it was. For me, that was Project Awful Picture. Someone should now go in because he's done that and say, right, actually, that's not right. With that look dodgy, let's have a look and take control of it because we need it to happen right now. We're supposed to be carrying on and teams will lose teams, teams and teams and teams if they don't give us the money that is in the game.
Why should the government have to find loads of money when the game is not being governed by them? I'd just step in, smash open some doors and say, let's have a look. Right, you're not having that, that's going there. They offered it, they offered it us, but they had clauses on the end of it. You know, they want to control that. They might want to slip this in and slip under a, a B team in. That ain't right. We all deserve to have our football club and, and keep it moving, no matter what size you are. I've managed at every single level. And who's telling me that that top one's better than where I am now? I don't think it is. I really don't. I think the people love their club just as much as these people at the top. So how dare you? How dare you try and control that when it ain't your place to? Ian, you're That's saying... That's how I feel. Yeah. Pretty obvious, really. Yeah, see, well, look, you're saying you need the money right now. How serious is your situation at Grimsby? How close are you to being in... Well, to going over the edge? Well, we're, we're a brilliantly run club. We are. We are one of the best. I've never been at anybody is run as efficiently as this. And uh, we're all right in a minute, but we'll carry on because we, we, we've, we've budgeted well. We're trying to do things right now. I'm going to have to call some of my squad. Now, now I can have five subs going on. Um, so I can play the same team over and over again and use five substitutes every game to get them through sort of minutes and try and balance it and plan what I'm doing. Not even tactically, it's just planning fitness-wise. So I can call some of the lads I've got because I'm going to have to. We can't afford it. So, you know, I'm going to have to do that not just in January. I'm going to have to think about doing that immediately. So we had a meeting last night about it. So, you know, as, as, I, as I'm stood here, Grimsby will be fine, but we need the package to come. You're probably talking February if we don't get any help and who's doing it who is doing it who's in charge of it have the efl got any power over the premier league at all to get the money off them mm. now you ain't gonna be a genius to work that out i don't think they have they're we're asking them i may as well go like that can you put that money in there please someone's got to step in that's the place you to end this honestly out. i am it is. It is. That is exactly what they should do. The government have looked at okay. it. You've got to sort yourselves out because you've got more than enough money. Ian, you know, but we've got to leave it? it there. We've got to leave it there. But thank you for joining us. More coming up next. No problem. Thank you very much.